Hi, and welcome to part two of module one, where we're going to be talking about primary health care systems. In Australia, the primary health care system is typically a person's first point of contact with the health system, and it's most often provided outside the hospital system. Um, a person doesn't really routinely need a referral for this level of care, which includes services which are provided by general medical and dental practitioners, nurses, Indigenous health workers, pharmacists and other allied health professionals, for example, physiotherapists, dietitians, chiropractors. You don't need to take a referral with you when you see any of those practitioners. Primary health care is delivered in a variety of different settings and these include places like general practices, Aboriginal and community controlled health services, community health centres and allied health services. And it's also um, delivered within the community and could incorporate activities such as public health promotion and prevention. Now, what's interesting is that primary health care accounts for almost as much spending as hospital services. So you're looking at about 36% of the total health expenditure recorded in 2011-2012 compared to 38% for hospital services. And you'll find uh, information about these statistics in the Ducat textbook, particularly Chapter 2, which is related to how much does Australia spend on healthcare and also chapter 8 in Ducat uh, covers primary healthcare in much more detail and the chapter is entitled Primary Healthcare in Australia. So please access those references in if you want a bit more detail about that. So the first task for you is to read the chapter 7 summary of primary healthcare services in Ducat and Wilcox these are on page 158 and 159, and you can find these pages on the LMS site. So once you've had a look at that, please answer the following questions. In your own words, describe primary health care services by services provided, Commonwealth government spending in 2007-2008, Relative proportions of patients attending for primary health care service. Inequities of publicly funded service provision for dental and allied health. And then finally, the last question there is, why does Ducat consider that primary health care services should be the foundation of the health system? And have a look at that on page 159 where he talks about that. Um, also, Duckett mentions secondary and tertiary health care at the end of page 159. And what I'd like you to think about is what you understand these terms to mean. So think about that briefly for now, and we'll cover that in more detail. Now, in relation to these questions for task one, my suggestion is that you put the answers together and then discuss with your working group to see whether or not you're all uh, of the same opinion. For task two, we're going to consider the remaining themes from chapter seven of Duckett and Wilcox, and you will have access to this reference. And we'll summarize the characteristics of a primary healthcare service using the following headings. Firstly, what is the ideal scope and profile of a primary healthcare service? What are the disadvantages of describing the primary healthcare service in terms of its workforce personnel? And then thirdly, what are the four funding sources? So I'm going to go through uh, and give you a summary under these headings over the next couple of slides, but uh, you'll need to read Chapter 7 in more detail so that you have a full grasp of the concepts. Let's start by having a look at what the ideal scope and profile of a primary healthcare service is. Essentially, primary healthcare services are ideally designed to be the first point of contact for management of health problems. So, for example, if, you, if you're sick, the first thing you often do, if you have a cold or something uh, like that, or even something more serious, is you might access your GP, your general practitioner, your family doctor, who is a, pri is a primary health care, uh, provides a primary health care service. <clears throat> so, um, these 
primary health care services can be described in a number of ways. For example, in terms of the functions they serve. So if they're a screening service or episodic or acute services, health promotion or support for chronically ill people. This is what the primary health care system aspires to, but not necessarily the way it actually works in Australia. And to sort of get an idea of what I'm talking about there, you really need to read Chapter 7 of Duckett and Wilcox. Now, primary health care services can also be described in terms of the health care provider. So we can talk about them in terms of general practitioners, and I mentioned that before with regards to family doctor, nurses, pharmacists, dentists, occupational therapists, podiatrists, and so on. And then finally, primary health care services can be described in terms of its funding source, and we're going to look at that more closely in a minute. Now, what are the disadvantages of, of describing a primary health care service in terms of workforce personnel? Let me read to you a quote from the Duckett and Wilcox textbook on page 161. It says, a typology based on health care providers excludes important elements such as the role of aids and equipment in helping people live with and manage a range of health conditions. So according to Duckett and Wilcox, a typology based on healthcare providers excludes these important elements that can assist people um, with regards to management of their whole health condition. So if we're talking about the types of AIDS, for example, if you are diabetic and you need aids and equipment in the form of a blood glucose meter and so on, it's not necessarily covered by that particular typology or description or, or definition if you're describing things by workforce personnel. Again, look at page 161 in Duckett and Wilcox and read chapter 7 for more information about that. Now let's summarise the four funding services for the primary health care system. Firstly, you've got the Medicare Benefits Schedule funding via the Commonwealth Government. Then there's community health services, which are state and territory government funding sources. For example, services like maternal and child health, alcohol and drug services, also ambulances are covered by the state and territory governments. Allied health and dental care is subsidised by private health insurance and non-medical primary health care services are covered by the individual person. This figure from the Australia's Health publication shows you the funding sources and responsibility for delivering health care, and it divides it up nicely in this graph. The inner segments indicate the relative size of expenditure, how much money is spent, in each of the three main sectors of the health system. So we're talking here about hospitals, primary health care and other, as it says. The middle ring indicates the relative expenditure on each service in the sector, shown by the size of each segment, and who is responsible for delivering the service, which is shown by the colour code. The outer ring indicates the relative size of the funding, shown by the size of each segment and the funding source for the different services, which is shown by the colour code. So for more detail, refer to the main text and the link there to that website is shown in the slide. So this now concludes part two about primary health care. What next? Well, the next video in module one will help you to understand secondary and tertiary care, which flows on nicely from your understanding now of primary health care.